we have the perfect pass here. Very exciting day. We have the screen. We have the Stargazer master module, the GPS, the different cords. We have the servo, a bunch of different miscellaneous connectors, and also the Z box. So let's go ahead and get started. So the next step here is to loosen this bolt on the throttle linkage so we can start to disassemble all of the linkage parts. Now when you're installing the L bracket, you want to put the washer right on to the uh, L bracket because you can see that there's this little metal spacer and that and what uh, the washer and spacer are going to do is allow the entire L bracket to pivot even when it's tight on your uh, throttle linkage because you don't want it to be uh, torqued down on your throttle linkage and so when your throttle linkage moves you don't want this to move you want it to be able to rotate with the washer on the on the L bracket you can go ahead and uh, tighten it up we'll put a nut right on the top here to tighten I am using a 3 8 inch socket with a 1 8 inch allen wrench and I'm just going to use uh, both tools to tighten this. That's good. You can kind of feel it stop. And look at that. It's still spinning. That's exactly what we want. Point the L bracket so it's on the, the side is on the, on the back side of the engine. We're going to go ahead and put the original throttle linkage back together over here. And then we can go ahead and lock this in place. And you can see now everything looks good. This nut's tight. You can see that there's a little bit of play right there. This is tight. It's able to twist as it moves. Come on over here. And go ahead and put it in gear take it out of gear put it in gear take it out just make sure it feels the exact same which it should and it does and that's looking really good I got a nice extension here you can probably just use a flathead if you don't have a extension but we're gonna go ahead and tighten that other side on all right, so it's all about fitment now that we have everything tight. Looks like nothing's rubbing when I close up the engine bay. Next is turn the throttle about halfway down to three quarters way down. And the important part here is to note that it this part moved all the way back and now you can see the cable. And so what you wanna do here is rotate this back and forth 
And if you can rotate that back and forth without any kinks or hiccups, you're golden. So probably the most difficult part is feeding the wire from the engine compartment all the way to the front. So what we had to do is fish the wire. We started from the engine and pushed it all the way up to the front, up in one of these holes, and I ended up pulling these two drain hoses out to give me a little bit more wiggle room. And uh, the, this uh, fishing wire just went all the way up, which was good. Uh, put electrical tape all around the two connectors. Make sure you're putting the two connectors down to the servo. And uh, we'll go ahead and fish it through. And then the next one. So now it's time to remove the right speedometer. There are four screws. So all I did in the back was the I just loosened these screws and then took this bracket off and now so now we want to close this off and the best way to do it is just pinch, pinch it shut just like that I'm gonna put a nice zip tie on here. We can go ahead and put the light and water hose back. Take ours apart. And tighten it back up with the bracket and nuts. Before you get it all tightened up, I'll just make sure everything is nice and level. You know, it's the way that you want all the buttons to work. And for me, that looks pretty good, so I'll go underneath there and tighten everything up. Now you're going to want to fish this wire all the way through that hole. While we're under here, we might as well connect the power cable. So purple is positive, black is negative, and the voltmeter, I feel like that's a good choice. It's on the right side, so I can get my head and head under there and it'll be super easy to connect. And it also shows the voltage. So in the back here you can see the purple cable and the black cable. So we're gonna unscrew both of those posts and connect our wire so we have the ground and power for our perfect pass. Next part is the RPM sensor and so this gray wire is going to
connect to the send terminal on the back of the RPM gauge. And then also this is just the ground. And right here is where you want to connect the RPM sensor. All right, so next step is to mount the GPS. I had to get a little double-sided tape. There's a little bit of foam in there as well. So we're just going to peel this off. And we're going to place it down here like so. Push it down. Then this wire is going to feed underneath the dashboard. Alright, so the Garmin GPS is attached to the paint. It is a no, there's no obstructions there, so it's just going to shoot out and go all the way up. I do like how it is underneath the windshield just to protect with the water in case any water splashes up or debris or something. The GPS module will be protected, which will be nice. I decided to mount the Z-Box underneath the steering column just on the left side where the wood is. It's just really easy to mount and screw to. Decided to put a level on there to make sure it's nice and level and get it uh, nice and straight. Arrow is pointing in the correct direction and we are good to go. It's in a nice dry area so no worries there. This is where the underneath the dashboard is and all the cables are right here go ahead and pull them all the way through over here all right for a quick review we've got the servo cable the power cable that's connected to the terminals the display i do not have a jump switch so i'm not don't have anything plugged in there and then you can see i've got the rpm sensor connected in there all by itself and then the uh, gps module is plugged into the Z-Box connector, and then the Z-Box connector is connected into the GPS. Those two devices work together to give you the uh, three event perfect pass system. Just on the other side, you can see that I cleaned up the wires, made it look super nice under here, and tucked them away so you won't see them when you're driving. Now I do have other videos like how to do the auto calibration, how to drive the perfect pass, how to map your course. Stay tuned for those videos and please check them out. Always like and subscribe and thank you for watching my content. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much.